Okay, we are all set. Okay. Okay, I have nine o'clock. I'd like to call the meeting of the Criminal Justice and County Affairs Committee to order. Um, we'll start out um, identifying ourselves. I'm Frank Engler, and I am participating from my home in Deerfield Township, Isabella County, Michigan. Steve Sweeney, attending from my home in Mount Pleasant, Michigan, Isabella County. Uh, Jim Horton, attorney for my office in Big Rapids, Michigan, Macosta County. Okay. Uh, is there any additions to the agenda at this time? Anybody would like to add anything? Okay. Seeing none, I will offer a call to the public. Is there anybody out there that would like to make a comment today? There is no public at this time, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. We will continue on then. Um, first item up is consider approving the Side Street Pork Farm 2 LLC farmland agreement application. Instruct Isabella County Clerk to forward and approve the application to the MDA Farmland and Open Space Program. So, I guess uh, we've seen these before. Um, I don't see uh, Mindy Lux or any on here. Um, I think this is the first one where we have a, a support operation and there is a special uh, um, special, uh, what they call it, uh, specialty farm de designation. So, um, the paperwork seems to be all in order. I don't know if you guys looked at the map or not, but uh, it's 80 acres and that's basically all there is in there. These uh, To get a specialty uh, hog operation, it, the restrictions are fairly, there's not very many places in Isabel County to put a hog operation up anymore. So um, it's pretty isolated. Uh, that one's been in operation for a couple of years now. So. Um, I guess if there's any questions um, on this. I don't have any. None for me. Okay. Looks like everything's in order. So uh, we use these. I'll, uh, I make a, mo a move to uh, bring this forward to the work session next Tuesday. We'll support that. Um, all in favor of moving this to the work session, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed the same, that will move forward to the work session. So, yeah, I think this is the first one that I've seen where we've, I think there's like three or four hog operations in the county. So, um, moving on to item number five, consider approving the agreement for the attorney services for the indigent individual, the MAC contract, effective. October 1st, 2021 through September 30th, 2022, and authorize the board chair to sign the same. And do we have anybody that wishes to speak on this one? I'm here, Commissioner Angler. Oh, I didn't see it, Mr. Houseman. Um, yeah, essentially, this is a, a continuation of the contract. Uh, we do this every uh, fiscal year. Uh, this contract covers uh, the 25% of MIDC controlled cases, uh, whereas our office handles 75%. Uh, it also covers those non MIDC controlled cases, such as neglect and abuse cases, uh, juvenile delinquency cases, mental petitions, uh, things of those nature that don't uh, involve MIDC. So they're uh, not covered by our office. Essentially, it's the same people on the contract uh, that have been for a number of years, with the exception of, of Mr. Brumell, uh, who was unable to continue due to health issues. 
Um, but as the board is aware, actually about two months ago, we added a new attorney into the contract, Kyle DeClue. Uh, he's doing a fantastic job so far. Um, so essentially it's subtracting Mr. Brumell and, and adding uh, Mr. DeClue. Okay, I see, I see that there was quite a big increase on the funding on there uh, because of the backlog. Are you, how do you foresee that backlog getting caught up? Or do you think it's gonna be all year to get it caught up backlog? Do you think you can handle them pretty fairly? Well, I, I, I see Ms. Curtis's uh, camera is off. She might be able to answer that question more than I can. Okay. I've been told we're making good progress. Ms. Curtis. <laughs> You're muted. <laughs> good morning. Thanks good morning. for being here, Tom. Yeah, no Appreciate problem. That. <laughs> um, so, the court's been having a lot of jury trials. So, we are we are moving cases forward to the extent that we absolutely can. The judges are busy, the magistrates, the referees. I mean, we are moving them along. Unfortunately, they're coming in almost as quickly as we can resolve them. So, um, we really don't have, like, a, a backlog with the exception of jury trials and people and it seems like everyone wants to go to trial right now so okay commissioner swain any questions no yes chairman um, tom you, you mentioned um attorney burrell being off but he's currently on the list are you just keeping him on the contract just in case his health does recover so he can practice because right now he's currently on the list. Correct. So when we put out the contract for signatures, it was back probably end of July, um, not knowing what his health status was. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we're all hopeful that, that he's able to continue. Um, but at that point, I wasn't comfortable just deleting him off the contract and saying, well, we'll figure it out later. Um, he emailed me about two weeks ago. Um, to say that he was going to uh, retire. Um, again, I'm still hopeful that that's not a permanent situation, but um, I have kept in contact with him. He's doing a bunch of bunch of physical yeah. therapy. Um, so I mean, that's hopeful. It's just the contract went out before he made that decision. Yeah. And I'll and I'll close um, with just saying every time I see Beryl Shirley's name and I see a P number in the 20s, I just have to compliment. Uh, I remember golfing with Bill several years ago, and I still use. Um, I, I, I mean, I, my golf game is becoming very much like Bill's. I say I hit a Bill Shirley, which means I hit it straight, not the farthest one in the thing, but straight down the middle of the fairway, and just play so consistent. So anyway, I'm done. Sorry about the digressing there, Chairman Angler. I apologize. So you don't often see a 20 P number in their 20s, so I just have to comment on that. So okay. Um, any more comments on this? If none, uh, Commissioner, I'll make a motion. I'll move to bring forward the contract with uh, Mac forward to the Tuesday meeting uh, work session. Okay, and I will support that. Is there any more discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote on this. All in favor, signify by aye. 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 Uh, opposed, the same. Okay, the motion has passed, and we will move that forward to the work session. Okay. Thank next. you. Thank you, Mr. Housen. Yes, Thanks, thank you, Mr. Housen. Okay, moving on. Uh, item Next item up is review and assess the semi-annual 2% application from the Isabella County Trial Court requesting $40,000 for the Adult Probation Department and pretrial service supervision. Okay, and Carrie, do you wanna take this one? Sure, good morning. Good morning. This is pretty similar to a couple of other applications we have um, submitted for 2% funds. Um, this time we're combining them into the overall court umbrella, which will allow us to serve more court users instead of simply specialty programs. So what we're looking for is um, some 
funding to cover electronic monitoring and um, testing and lab analysis and counseling and bus passes and gas cards for our court users. We're finding that um, a lot of them have cost barriers to completing the requirements of their pretrial or even their probation. So we're trying to eliminate as many of those as we can. Um, and when we do that, it also allows us to keep a better handle on who's being successful and who isn't. We can you know, put on more monitors, we can do more testing and that kind of thing, which helps us get people back on track if they do relapse. So we find that that's helpful. As I'm sure you're all aware, we have a pretty serious meth and fentanyl problem in our community. Um, we did provide some statistics in here, um, I think. We didn't, we should have. So we, are up this year, we have 264 counts of felony drug cases that have already been bound over to circuit court through September 13th. That is um, an average of about nine more than we had last year per month. So that's kind of significant and we really want to try to get a handle on that. So this will help us in that goal. So I'm happy to answer any questions. We did provide a um, detailed spreadsheet that explains how we would like to use the funds if they were awarded. Okay, questions. Pretty straightforward. Uh, Mr. Swain, Chairman. Get back the plan to uh bring in the support so more people can uh, be successful in the program. Um, Chairman Horton, any questions? Any questions? I, have, I, I have nothing on this one. Very good presentation, Kara. I like the way you spread yes. out budget items. Very nice, thank you. Yep. Pretty self-explanatory, so. Uh, okay, seeing so you no, know, I'll take a moment, just move this forward. All right, I move uh, to bring forward the 2% application for the Isabella trial court um, for the adult probation department and pretrial services to Tuesday's work session. Okay, I will support that. Is there a discussion? Okay, seeing none, I will proceed to vote. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed to say, uh, the motion has passed. We will move that forward to the work session. So. Uh, Thank you, Administrator. Thank you. Kirk. Thank you. And uh, we'll move on. And we seem to be moving quite. Nobody's real talkative today, so <laughs> probably a good thing. So um, next up is review and assess the semi-annual two percent application from the Isabel County Sheriff Office, requesting eighty thousand two hundred eighty-two dollars and forty cents for the hazardous material team, the SCA. So. And I do not see the sheriff. He's on. Oh, right in the middle. I should. I was in the corner, sheriff. I'm. I'm pretty sure, sure you'll have. You'll have something to say. So, Chairman <laughs> Ingley, you must have had something against Hollywood Squares and Paul Lynn because you're missing the center square all day today. I know. I'm missing. I'm looking at the edges and I'm missing it. And well, I'm not. I'm not used to that. We got a new internet provider. We got to have that eye test for you. Works now. And everybody's moving back and forth. So. Yeah, I, I have noticed, uh, Commissioner Engler, that you are not uh, as jerky and freezing up. Yeah, well, as, as. Okay. Uh, Commissioner, Engler, Sheriff. Commissioner Engler, I never thought you were a jerk, so I just put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sheriff, jerky? I'm sorry. Sheriff, get me out of this, please. Go ahead. Uh, of course, only the Sheriff catches that, right? <laughs> Uh, morning, folks. Um, so real quick, you know, the, uh, the, the hazardous materials unit was um, established back early 2000s. Um, it really was established uh, by the fire chiefs and law enforcement um, when we were having a uh, lots of issues with um, strange powders being sent to, you know, government officials and businesses. And we just uh, kind of observed a need there. So that's kind of where the initiated from. Um, it's grown substantially since then. 
Uh, the Fire Chief Association kind of oversees it. They put members onto it. We do have a deputy that's been assigned to it for many years um, for the criminal side of it. Um, for the majority now, over the last 20 years or so, we, we've only done a lot of um, spills and things like that in almost every part of our community. Uh, the team is a, is a huge resource. Our closest teams are Grand Rapids or farther out. Um, there's some private teams in Dow, but it's pretty tricky to get them to come out on stuff. So it's a huge benefit to our, uh, for, for our county. Um, we've been able to self-sustain it for many, many, many years just by fines and costs of, you know, um, to the spillers and that kind of thing. There is a small fee that goes out to each township and entity um, every year. So we use that a little bit for physicals and so forth. Long story short, uh, you know, uh, the St. Louis Triple Indian Tribe has been very um, um, beneficial to us on this team over the years. They actually purchased the first round of self-contained breathing apparatus, which was crucial in these level A suits. And, you know, um, I used to be on the hazmat team as a hazmat technician many years ago, and I found myself at uh, a couple of events where I had to be encapsulated in those uh, suits. So you want those air tanks. Those are your life safety uh, tools to, to be good, you know, and in, in, in they can't fail because of the whole process of having to decon before you can get out of those level A fully encapsulated suits and different things. So long story short is um, the, the team, the, 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 the SCBAs that they have are about 17 years old. Um, they've replaced the bottles, but the, 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 tank, the air packs themselves need to be replaced. All the fire departments are in the process of doing that. Um, they're in great need of it. They reached out, asked if I would put it in because they're not really a government entity. They're seen under you know, the, the fire chiefs and, and so forth. So um, with the deputy on it, I thought that would be appropriate and, and, and a good, a good move. Um, the, the testing unit um, is they, every year they have to test, you know, qualitative and quantitative testing. So that testing unit needs to be updated, and they need these packs, and it is pretty crucial. And again, the team is, you know, they do training, but it, and they sit there for a lot of a lot of days without doing anything. But the second you need them, they're an amazing uh, resource to have in our community. And and I'm a little concerned that. We might start seeing things like suspicious powders and, and crazy stuff, you know, come back into play just with uh, what's going on in our country. But um, at any rate, I'd like to see this put through uh, as a, as a um, grant consideration at this point in time. Well, I know, <clears throat> excuse me, I know, Sheriff, that the hazardous waste, the A community, part of the certification, and there's a grant program. Or as far as handling spills and identifying, I said, the larger farms and everything, uh, handling the larger equipment and more chemicals on there. So uh, I know part of the certification process is to have a plan and be well prepared for spills and stuff. And uh, I can't imagine either the sheriff or the fire department going into a situation where they don't know where everything is at. So some of the stuff, uh, does not mix well, put it that way, especially when you had fire or something or even, or even a spill sometimes. So, um, yeah, I'm always supportive of this one because, like I said, it's it's pretty important and, and some of the chemicals out there are pretty deadly. So, I was I was uh, in a fully encapsulated suit at one point in time and uh, we responded to a lab um, that had an explosion. So not only did we have one thing, but we had uh, lots of things that all mixed. So, it's a, it's a little eerie feeling to be walking into the unknown and having all that stuff. So it was nice having them in suits and that, that equipment. So. Oh, yeah, that was mine. Uh, Pop-up just happened there. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yes, uh, Chairman Harton. A uh, couple quick couple quick things. Uh, Sheriff Main, first of all, how, we had Ms. Curtis on just a few moments ago, and she's talking about the increase in the meth and everything in our community. How often is this hazmat team? Do you get called in on uh, meth lab sites or anything that you have to go in and clean up or is that handled by a different unit? So uh, when we had meth labs, and I'll, and I'll explain that in a second, um, the, the, the DEA would, keep, it would train um, responders and stuff. And it, unless it was a certain type of lab, um, the hazmat team wasn't necessarily needed for that. They had their own cleanup ability and, and so forth. Certain labs, um, they, they, they asked for assistance. Uh, but we don't see labs. Um, this, this is coming out of um, places like China um, into our southern borders and coming up. So it's much cheaper now just to buy the raw material versus making it. So uh, knock on wood because the labs are 
horrific and hard and expensive to clean and, and so forth. But we just don't see a lot of labs right now. Um, and I, I know the conversation was earlier about, you know, the, trying to catch up that backlog in the courts and stuff. And I can tell you, you know, we're taking anywhere from 35 to 45 new intakes to the jail every week. So when they talk about trying to catch a backlog up in, in their, uh, the, the new stuff coming in, it's, this is going to be a long-term thing to get caught back up. So. Yeah, I was not aware of that. Thank you for that update. I, again, not, not uh, being involved in that type of lifestyle, I have no idea. Um, and I just harken back to the days back when I was in high school, you know, I know Chairman Angler, your days are long past mine. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, um, man, <laughs> you know, um, anyway, um, I just remember, you know, how times have changed. Um, I remember reaching my hand into a, literally reaching my hand into a jar of mercury to sit there and say, if I could actually grab the mercury and you'd come up with an empty hand or playing with it on the tabletops and stuff like that. So and today that would probably equate to closing everything down and calling in a crew to clean everything up. So that's just how times have changed and that's the way it is. So yeah, that's how I always relate when I see hazmat crews. I always think back to playing with mercury in high school. So yeah, um, maybe, maybe, maybe that explains, maybe that explains a lot about me too. Who knows? So we've got a couple of mercury spills where the hazmat team has responded now. So you're absolutely correct. Um, yeah. You know, and just one other thing too, you know, on our Facebook page every week, I put up a, a weekend review and it has all those numbers on there. So if you're ever interested in seeing really what's going on, just take a peek at that every week and try to do it on Mondays and it, it'll stagger you. So. Thank you. That's all chairman Angler. Okay. You know, chairman or Horton, if I ever walk in the room and people don't give me a rough time, I know it's going to be a long meeting. So, <laughs> so uh, um, quick, quick question. Here. Yes. Uh, so I see that the application project priority is low. Is, is that correct? Well, if I click low, that was incorrect. I was trying to get the high priority one. So my right. if it's correct. That, I could, I just, I didn't figure that that was the case. So uh, we'll I, I appreciate have to correct that. I didn't that. catch that. Yeah, that should, that, I would not have clicked that low, no. And, it would, you right. would ask, and to piggyback on that, good catch, uh, Commissioner Sweeney. Reoccurring need, uh, you want to have a not reoccurring or reoccurring? So, you know, when, when um, again, the tribe has been very beneficial with the fire departments and stuff. And years ago, they, they gave a countywide grant out for self-contained breathing apparatus to all of us, including the hazmat team. Um, we, we opted to go with the fire departments opted to go with a fiber bottle um, with a 15 year expiration date, um, which was great at the time. They were lightweight, they were easy to use, but they had a 15 year expiration date. So we've kind of self corrected that. Uh, you know, the, these air packs are probably good for many, 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 many years to go. Um, the bottles now are steel, so there's not really a replacement need like we used to have. So I really don't think there's a recurring need. Um, there might be. A decade or two down the road maybe you know and these are all in fpa obviously um standard packs and stuff but sometimes they make changes that kind of force our hands sometimes but i don't see that at this time all right very good thank you yes uh mr Mark, just Mark, that. it's fine I'm, I'm the oldest person on the screen mr chair it's okay I, I don't need to talk about the mercury i <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know that we had mercury in the in the labs when I was in school. But um, as far as the low priority, I will check check with Jessica after the meeting. I don't know if uh, we might be able to go in and change that to high for you, Sheriff. Okay. If not, we might have to circle back and have you go in and do it. But we, that should be high, correct? Yeah, and I and I, I I clicked on it. I don't know unless it didn't click right or something, but it, it should be yes. It's okay. It's, I'm sure it hasn't been submitted yet to the tribe. It's just been submitted to us, to, to the board to assess. So we can make that correction if we can. Um, and I'll chat with Jessica after the meeting. So people, uh, for the day, you might be noticing that you might get a different one in your packet that says hi, if we can change it now. I saw that too when I read through it and I thought, hmm, that doesn't seem right, but I forgot to make a note on it. So thank you. Commissioner Sweeney for Absolutely. catching that. Thank you. All right. Um, make a motion to move this 2% application for Isabel County Sheriff's Office uh, West for hazardous materials team uh, to, uh, to stay work session. I will support that. Um, is there any more? There's a motion on the table that's been supported. Is there any more discussion? 
Uh, seeing none, we'll move forward to the vote. All in favor, signify by aye. Aye. Opposed, the same. Uh, the motion has passed, and we will move that forward to the work session. So, next item up is review and assess the semi-annual 2% applications from the Humane Animal Treatment Society, HATS, requesting $17,680 for pet microchipping initiatives. So I know this is near and dear to your heart, Margaret. So would you like to take this one? Sure. So, um, you know, HATS has been a contracted service provider uh, for the county for years, way, way before my time here. And uh, they provide the care, the care and the adoption services for the animals at the animal shelter. And uh, they are looking at um, having a request submitted on their behalf to do microchipping. You know, a, a lot of the animals that come into the animal shelter are lost. Um, and uh, some of them that come in who are then adopted out, um, you know, they, they leave with their license and their tags, et cetera. But, the microchipping is a good way to keep pets and their families together. And the more that can happen, then the less will end up in the shelter, uh, obviously. So I certainly, um, you know, support their request for the funding to cover the free microchips for the animals that are in the shelter and for any of the uh, clinics I'll use or events that um, HATS does in the community. Now, uh, last time that we, that the board of commissioners met, I believe, um, uh, we approve an option for when they have adoption activities outside of the shelter that they would, you know, request approval to waive fees for that. Um, they're not asking to do that with a microchip, but I will tell you when you look at, well, what kind of events do they have? You know, they go to the large pet stores, um, you know, when you go to the pet stores and people bring their pets in. Um, they will they will participate in some of those and participate in other clinics. So really, they're looking at the microchips would cost six dollars and thirty five cents each to purchase, um, and uh, that would also then we would also want to uh, you know they're factoring in here the cost the added costs that each chip would cost to implant, um, and looking at the calculations, it's about eight dollars and fifty cents a chip, uh, but in the long run. You know, they're asking for a total of $17,680 uh, to provide that chip to hundreds of animals. And that is a great way for us to keep animals uh, either out of the shelter or when they come into the shelter, return them as soon as possible to their families. Now, that's a different situation than the enforcement issues that the animal control portion of the operation needs to do. We're talking about the shelter portion. So I would ask that the commissioners would um, move this forward. I think it's a uh, proactive step um, in, uh, in, in keeping pets with their owners and out of the shelter. So to me, it's a very positive thing. Also, just so you know, HATS would, is not really eligible to apply directly for the 2% funds because they need to be you know, uh, governmental units uh, because we do have a contract with HATS. That's why we would be taking it forward if the commissioners approved to do that. Okay, hey, thank you. Uh, any questions? Uh, yeah, I see that they would be receiving over 2,000 chips mm -hmm. in here. That's a lot of chipped animals. It's a lot of chipped animals. <laughs> uh, do, I, I didn't see how many they thought a year. Um, I think that I saw. Because it's not recurring, so I assume this is. I believe that they were talking somewhere about, I'm sorry, I have this highlighted. Let me find which highlighted section I'm looking at. Um, they talk about under uh, page three. Mm -hmm. uh, they go over shelter go. animals and then they go over healthcare clinics and they go free microchip clinics. They say that under healthcare clinics, they go oh, well over a thousand public owned animals each year that they serve uh, of those, blah, 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 blah. So that's kind of what they're, that's probably how they're okay. spacing it under page three. Um, 
understood it, right? Yeah, I think Got that it. they're looking at, you know, in the second paragraph there, 200 uh, intakes to be returned to their owners um, in a best scan scenario, best case scenario. So I think if we were to add all those together there, uh, between the animals that are brought in, the animals that are brought in for spaying and neuter, and all of the total, when you look at it, um, I think they're talking about offering the free microchips to pets when they come for surgeries, a thousand, and then you look at 200. And I think they're really talking, if you go down here under the budget items, they're looking at 2,080. Chairman Angler? Yes. One of the, just, just commenting too on, the, on, on some of the 2% quest, uh, two requests. Um, I really, I, I like what I've seen here. Like at 850, they break it down the cost of the chip plus the cost of the administration. I really like that. The sheriff in his last presentation, I didn't mention it to him, but he actually put down $100 for shipping. I mean, there, there, there are costs involved in everything that we do, just not the actual product itself. So um, this, this is, this is, this is good. I like this, how it's being done and how it's broke out. And, uh, it just it being totally transparent in what you're asking for is very nice. So that's it, Chairman Inger. Thank you. Yeah. Well, maybe, uh, uh, Administrator Mackwick help me on this a little bit. I, we used to chip our cows a lot. Uh, now do they have to have a special reader at that to read the chips on that? I know things have moved advanced quite away, but do you know how that, do they have the ability to read the chips or where does that, does that go to the company? They have a way to, who, or is that something that they can just, because it's a simple app now or something, I'm just kind of curious. We used to have some, you have to have equipment to read the chips, but I'm curious. Well, it's a very good question and you've kind of stumped me. So I will okay. ask the question of hats and, and get back okay. to the committee. My understanding is that, you know, obviously, um, I don't know if it's a little handheld scanner or what it is. I know, um, and, I'm, and I'm not familiar, of course, with the chip system that you have, but I know one of my family members who has a cattle operation, you know, uh, their whole chip thing, they had to put a kind of a pillar at the cattle guards and when the cattle walked past that, it was a, it, it was a heavy lift as I'm sure yours was too. So I can find that out. I'm assuming that obviously there's going to be something to read the chips or there's uh, no point in putting the chips in. So I'll find out. That's a very good question. Let me get back to you. Well, it's been like tender. It's been a long time since I've had cattle and technology moves so fast that like in five years, it's completely different. Different. Yeah. So I was just kind of curious. Great question. I'm just looking online here. I just quickly did it. They got videos of microchip PET scanners and all that. I just wonder if the chips are all like, you know, are, are they all interchangeable or, or, or I can't even speak this morning. Um, or are they like uh, diabetic test strips where one chip fits one machine um, versus a universal a, a universal chip? So good question. I, it's an it's interesting topic. Just looking at these, they even sell handheld models and you know, they, and so, yeah, that's, that's, but I'm sure it's very standardized and universal. Otherwise, given the, the nature of your clientele, as we say, the, the, the animals uh, and the, you know, you want to have something that's universal, I would think. But again, great, good question, Chairman Engler. In, in my mind, Chairman Engler, I see the little readers like they have in the grocery stores, you know, or you have the big item you can't get out of your cart and they reach over with the little reader and read it. That's what I see in my mind. But that's just Margaret's mind. There's all sorts of interesting things in that mind. So let me, <laughs> that may not be correct. So let me find out and I will get back to the committee. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, any more uh, questions? I will entertain a motion at this time. I move to um, bring forward to next week's uh, work session, the 2% application by HATS for requesting Pet microchipping initiative. And I will support that. It's been moved and supported. We move this forward to the work session. Is there any more discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, signify by aye. 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 Opposed the same. Uh, the motion has passed. We'll move this forward. At this time, I'd like to make a call to the public. Is there anybody that wishes to make a comment at this time? There is no public at this time, Mr. Chairman. 
Okay, thank you. Um, I need to bring one thing up real quick, uh, something I've been working on. I got my other commissioners here, so maybe get some input on that is uh, we're dealing with the gypsy moth situation out in the west side here. And I recently found out that the supplies to spray with is in very short demand. So the deadline to get anything up actually has to be probably December. We were hoping we'd have some time during the winter to have some programs to get that set up. But if we don't get the spray beforehand, I know Lake Isabella is, is looking into a special assessment. Um, it seems to be spreading a little bit, mostly on the west side. Um, so I just didn't know if anybody heard anything or to tell your people if they're interested. Uh, a lot of it's going to have to be private run. I don't think there's any services at the county. We really don't have a department that actually handles that. Um, but I know I've talked with the extension a little bit and they can offer material, but they don't have the resources. The USDA is down three foresters, so they do not have the uh, capacity to do it. So I'm just giving you a, a quick update what's going on. I said, I'm not sure if it hits your area very much. Um, I know one time we were gonna talk, make sure that the parks are safe. That might be the only thing the county might have to get involved in. I hate to lose. Um, trees, especially in Deerfield Park, but uh, I was actually trying to get somebody to volunteer to go in there, Forrester, that I know from uh, way up north to come and look at that. So uh, anyway, it's just an update. I didn't know what your opinion of it uh, was, but uh, we've got one more year in this cycle, so uh, and it's uh, needs to be done in the spring, so uh, going to try to get a bunch of group together. So anyways, this is a comment. I was kind of shocked that we, that we had to make a decision to move move any kind of timeline forward to get anything done. So um, can you talk to uh, yeah. Ann about the parks being We've, we've talked about it a couple of times, but the problem is, is the, you know, uh, the cost basically, we'll see what it is. So we were still looking at, you know, maybe 40, $50 an acre, but um, anyway, there's a lot of acres there, but so, uh, you need to do an assessment before you spray, just like everything else. So, so far, I haven't seen a lot of, there's some a little bit in there, but um, there's always a point where you can accept some damage, the, you know, the, the threshold point. So somebody needs to do that assessment before we get in a, uh, and we'll probably try to do that here soon. So, um, but as far as the rest of it goes, uh, like I said, uh, just like everything else, it's in short supplies. We're actually having problems. I've been ordering some supplies for me because their chemicals are in short supplies. So for next year, or so um, I've already been told I can't get some things already. So and that's like we're pretty far out. You know, so, anyways, I just wanted to bring that up to you. Uh, like I said, I know uh, some of the I've been getting a lot of calls, mostly in the west side, a little bit to the north. So. Um, we probably got one more year, but just because it's normally a three-year cycle, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a three-year cycle. So anyways, I just wanted to bring that up for any comments, let you inform that if anybody's having, you know, a area, a group um, that's having a problem, they're going to have to get together because it's pretty hard to spray one house. So um, anyways, that's all I have. So I didn't. Anybody had any more comments? Nope. Okay. Seeing none, I will call this meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe.